Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 10. This one is going to be a bit busy. We will tackle both fertilizers, as well as water desalination today. I expected the thermal desalinators to be at least one more episode away, but they will be unlocked fairly early in this one, so I immediately jumped on the opportunity. Setting those up is always a joy, and now that we have vertical pipes, it is also much easier. And having that desalinator complex also means that we can start setting up the first liquid line on the main bus. For water, obviously. We will also deal with acid, some general fine tuning, the usual. Before we get started, if this is not your first video from this channel, you already know what to expect. If you want to be kept up to date, please consider subscribing, and if you like what you see, leaving a like will also help letting me know what to focus on. But enough talking, let's get into it. Okay, first things first, during the last episode's outro, I noticed that the town water supply was running dangerously low. I know I know, that's why there's storage alerts in the game. And second yes, I did just forget to set it for the tank. My bad. Next, having so many tier 2 trucks running around, it is time to start removing some of the older ones. The terraforming project is perfect for this. All sorts come here to drop off stuff all the time, so it's really easy to catch them in the act. Eight pickups sounds okay for now. Let's leave some around until we are sure the new guys can handle everything. As for the refinery tanks, I just set one of them to priority one, and the second to two. Should ensure that at least one of them gets built as soon as possible. And I think it made sense to set the town desalinator's fuel supply to be priority one. We need that thing running 24-7. Just to make sure our coal supply is safe, I gave the downstairs designations a two tile wide area to work with, just in case the upstairs ones cannot keep up. The last episode's fuel troubles are still having some lingering effects, but we are well on our way out of that mess. Well, we have a lot of sulfur and ammonia stored up at this point. Time to start using them. We will start with the ammonia, which we will turn into the first tier fertilizer. By feeding that into our farms, we can artificially increase their fertility to 100%. If we further increase the fertilizer to tier 2, then we could go up to 140%, but as far as I know, we would encounter diminishing returns at that point, so I'm not sure I will bother with it right now. Later, sure, but not now. Anyways, to make the level 1 version, we only need the ammonia and some oxygen. Super simple stuff. Of course, we don't want our air separator backing up, so we will just went the nitrogen back out. A large tank might be a bit of an overkill. A tier 2 one will do just fine. Now comes the pipes around the farms. The water pumps are in the way, so those will have to be moved. I will only build back those four we demolished just now, but I will hook all eight fields up to them. That will undoubtedly start draining the groundwater reservoir, so we will absolutely need to sort out some other form of water to supplement it. And you already know that we will. So, let's get started with the piping. Fertilizers go first. Let's make sure we leave a small gate for our trucks to move around between the farms. Wait, that's the water inlet. Don't worry, I'll fix that in a second. If you think this is painful to watch, just imagine being the one who made the mistake. Quite embarrassing. Yeah, that was the wrong pipe. Anyways, the principle is the same. We just hook everything up where they belong, 
all while making sure to leave the other inlets accessible. Okay, that's the fertilizers taken care of. We still need to do the water, and since we left the inlets freely accessible, it will be done easily. and we're out of construction parts. It's only a matter of time before we're back to normal, so I'll just leave them to it. Now, about those farm fertility values. We have four farms, and if we set all of them to 100%, that would be a colossal waste of the fertilizer. We can adjust those values, all while keeping an eye on the estimated production quantities per minute. We just need to take the settlement's food consumption, divide it by four, and that's the value we need to go for. In this case, I will slightly overproduce them, both for having a bit of wiggle room, since we have a lot of room in the town, and to keep making biodiesel. I forgot to add a storage tank for sour water at the stripping facility. It would be best to have one, so we need to rearrange stuff slightly to do it. That's better. Now we will really only dump this nasty stuff in the sea if absolutely necessary. The problem now is that these four pumps will not be able to deal with all the farming water demand. But according to the research bar on top, thermal desalination is right around the corner. I was wondering why the copper mine never got any dirt for extending the shoreline. That's because I forgot to tell the tower to allow dirt dumping. The outer rim in the coal mine is progressing slowly but surely. Shouldn't be too long before we can start building the walls. To ensure a steady supply of stone for the terraforming efforts, let's extend the digging area for this place. We only want to dig out the actual cliffs though, beyond those, it's pretty much all dirt. The water situation in the town was still a bit concerning. Even with the unity boosts, we are still struggling to keep the town pipes full. Let's try upgrading everything. Maybe it's a pipe throughput issue. And look! We just unlocked thermal desalination. Right when we need it the most. Talk about perfect timing. I think this place is pretty much perfect for the first attempt at doing this. Obviously, once the whole shoreline is finished, we will build a much bigger, more permanent setup. But that's not an excuse to do this one badly. Let's try to make a nice facility.
I think four desalinators will be enough for now. They only require 12 high pressure steam to operate, so we can do all four from a single boiler. And I was worried that they would still require 120 seawater to operate, but no, they changed them to still match the output of the pumps, so we only need four of those. That's the seawater input sorted. We still need to get rid of the brine, and unfortunately, they make too much of that stuff. I was too lazy to do the math, so I just gave one liquid dump for each desalinator. Now, this setup does block some of the shoreline dumping designations, so some of it will only be done once we move on to the final facility. A small price to pay if you ask me. Next up, we need somewhere to put the fresh water we make. Obviously, a large tank is the answer for that. I put it a bit further down, in case we need to expand the setup. Now, technically, we could easily use a single pipe to move the output of two desalinators together to the tank. But that would look boring. Having four separate pipes look more badass, right? Later on, if we need to expand, then we can merge the next four outputs into these pipes. I really only did this for the looks. Now, the steam. As I've said, they only take 12 units each, so we can easily do this with a single boiler. And if you took a look at the different methods of doing this in the info window, you'll see that we could also use low pressure steam, but we would need 24 of that, since it's much lower energy. And we could also use something new, called super pressure steam. We cannot make that yet. For the sake of accessibility, it would be advisable to build a ramp over those pipes. Good thing the big one has a center channel with a 4 tile wide tunnel. And I think we can unpause this whole thing at this point. Time to make some water. While things are being brought in, we can do some last second adjustments. I think it would look better if the seawater pipes were going this way. And as it turns out, we only need a single tile wide tunnel to allow steam access to the middle desalinators. The farms have water now, but looking at the groundwater pumps, the deposit below is starting to deplete. Once the desalinators are up and running, we will need to set up a pipe balancer to ensure that we only use those pumps as a backup. Also, we have enough materials now to build the other two large storage tanks at the refinery. Nice. That should keep us going for a while. Before I bring in the water for the boiler, we should get the process started, so we have something to bring back.
and we just unlocked salt production. Nice, we will be able to use some of the brine we make in the desalinators for this. And in case you missed it, I did just tell the coal mining tower to let me know if it can't dump sand. In case the storages get too full. Alright. Boiler's done. The trucks will bring in a bit of water from elsewhere, likely from a rain harvester, and we can get this thing started. The pipes going to the tank are still not done though, they are a bit pricey. But look! Brine is being dumped. The desalinators are online. At this point, we have water being made, so we can build that pipe. We will just bring some of the water back from the tank to the boiler. Technically, we could just use a balancer to leach some water off the existing pipes, but hey, having 5 pipes instead of 4 looks even better. You know what, might as well do the salt production now. Glass making is already being researched, and we will need salt to make it. We just need a pipe balancer to merge, and then split the pipes, making sure we keep the evaporation pools as an output priority. Yeah, those pools are facing the wrong way. I'll fix that once I notice it. Now, we are missing one output port for the last liquid dump. The pipes can carry 200 units per minute, so I guess we can just split the last line. and I finally notice it. The pools are backwards. And we have salt being made. It will be very handy for making glass, as well as a preservative for some of the foodstuffs. Wow, the water tank is already close to full. Time to start using all that H2O. First, let's try to preserve the groundwater deposit, so we use a pipe balancer to prioritize water coming from the desalinators, and only use the pumps if absolutely necessary. Well, since we have so much water, I think it's time to start the first liquid line on the main bus. We have a lot of need for water all over the island, so putting water on the bus is quite important. We reached the place where we have the most rain harvesters. Let's sort out the supply side of the pipe first, and then we can do the users. Might not be the best idea, but it will do for now. We can tap into the farm pipes, making sure to use a balancer. We still need to prioritize it going to the fields, and only use the rest for other stuff.
Speaking of the farms, we should be seeing some improvements in our food output by now. Well, that's some encouraging upward trend to say the least. And we just unlocked glass making. I suppose we could start building it right now, but we have so many other things to take care of first. How about we extend the terraforming area? I would like to fill in this whole place if I can. We just need to ease back on the mining a bit. We don't need to dig the limestone out, we only need to level out the general vicinity. With rainfall, the groundwater should be bouncing back. It will take some time though. Well, since we will have to wait a little bit for homemade glass, we will need to buy some to keep our vehicle production going. Also, we will need acid to make it efficient anyway, so how about we do that next? I want to get rid of most rain harvesters anyway, and we will need acid to do that for the copper production. To make acid, we will need to use a mixer, in which we will mix sulfur with water. Very easy to make. I suppose we could just tap into the line going back to the boiler. And that's all there's to it. Need a tank to store it, and the production is good to go. So, let's start dismantling those rain harvesters. They take up a lot of space, space we could use for other stuff. If you remember, I said a couple episodes ago that we can use acid in place of water in the copper electrolysis. If we use water, then the process is a bit inefficient, and we lose a bit of copper. But with acid, we can make it completely lossless, and we won't lose any of it. There. We have acid on site. We can switch the buildings over to the new recipe, and stop wasting copper. Let's take care of the rest. The steel foundry also needs water for the cooled casters. I suppose we could have just left them, and used balancers to only use the desalinated water as a backup. Still might do it one day. The island is pretty big, so we could use some of that land as a big rain harvesting operation. But for now, let's just get rid of them, since we will need the space for the advanced furnaces. Well, that's a bit of an ugly looking pipe, but to be honest, advanced smelting is right around the corner so I don't mind having it around for such a short amount of time. And the new tier 2 tree harvester can't find its way to the designated trees to cut them down. Let's build a ramp to help it out. Well, not that specifically. By destroying that belt segment, the harvester will just drive off, but any new vehicle that cannot pass under belts will benefit from it. I'll be honest. I think these brickworks are doing a good job at using the dirt we mine. Too good a job in fact. 
Now that we started building the shoreline for the mining walls, we kind of need that dirt elsewhere, so they are now paused. And to ensure that we keep the dirt flowing to those projects, how about we level out this general area? I think we will need it to build the advanced furnaces anyway. We could also upgrade that excavator to tier 2, so it can do the job faster. Speaking of upgrading, let's do some more trucks. We still had one pickup working for the old tree harvester. And four of them at the gas station. Upgrading those guys would be a big help. An advanced smelting is unlocked. There wasn't enough time in the episode to get started, but that is something that we need to get going as soon as possible. Now, I did consider retiring that tier 1 tree harvester, since we have the new one now, but I decided to keep it around. Apart from speeding up the deforesting efforts, it will still be useful when we start doing forestry ourselves. Oh, yeah. Let's not forget about exploration. Let's repair the flagship, and then send it out on new adventures. Plus, we can upgrade it with the new bridge systems. That will let us look into neighboring nodes as we explore, so we can avoid unnecessary confrontations. So, before we sail out, let's do that upgrade. Let's give the water storage an alert. I want to be notified well in advance of any big trouble, so I set it to alert me if it goes below 75%. And it looks like the town water managed to catch up. Very relieved to see it. Still, I want to be extra sure it goes well, so let's hook it up to the main bus. We will still rely on the local desalination capacity, and only use the bus for emergencies. Hmm. We are encroaching on the ramp. Let's place the pipe, and then check the navigation overlay to make sure it still allows trucks to go through. Yep, it's all green. It's good. So, the majority of the water will still come in from these old distillers, which I suspect will be replaced by a proper set of desalinators soon. And good thing I checked on the water facility. The current liquid dump cannot keep up with the waste water output, so we need to deal with that right now before it starts to cause serious health issues. The last thing we need is a cholera outbreak. By the way, I did notice that the pipe coming in from the main bus is backwards. Definitely need to be turned around. Nice. The biodiesel tank is slowly filling up. And I think it's time to deal with this particular tank now. Instead of feeding it with trucks, we should give it a dedicated pipe at this point, but for that, we need to move it up a bit, so we can access the input ports. In fact, we can just turn it around, and have the output facing the shipyard.
we can safely tap into the diesel line going to the rubber makers, they can easily share the throughput capacity. You know what? I think it's time to upgrade our backup generators. Everything's going rather well these days, so we better do it now, instead of when things are going downhill for one reason or another. It seems these guys require a dedicated exhaust chimney. That complicated matters. I'm afraid the fuel station needs to move. And we just upgraded it. That's a bit wasteful that is. Okay, we should set these generators to the lowest output priority. The default setting already placed them below the mechanical generators, but still, it's for my own peace of mind. And after replacing the fuel station, we are pretty much back to normal at the docks. And I was about to stop recording, but noticed that a couple excavators were stuck trying to go for a refuel. Let's help them out, and then we can end it. Well, that is pretty much it for today's outing, but we have a lot of new stuff to play with in the next one. The biggest is of course the advanced smelting. That will require a bit more space and planning to set up, but it will be well worth the effort. Then there's glass making. It's relatively easy, we just need to create a mix of a couple stuff to produce the glass raw material, which we will feed into a furnace to melt it, and then feed that into a glass maker building, which will create nice sheets of the stuff. We'll be much better to make it ourselves to say the least. We should also start considering a forestry setup somewhere on the island. The obvious choice is of course the little elevated area we are deforesting right now, but we could also consider using the other end of the island, where our old oil distillery setup was. That place still has trees for us to cut down. And who knows what kind of wonders we will unlock next. Things are starting to get really interesting now, and we are almost at the point where the last series ended. Let's make sure we get past that point. Anyways, if you haven't done it already, I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel, and leaving a like would also let me know that this video was worth making. If you feel that it was good enough, and you can afford it, please consider going to my Ko-fi page, which you can find in the description, and donate an amount that you feel is appropriate. And if you did like what you've seen, there should be links to some of my other videos and playlists on the screen. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.